So ladies and gentlemen, once again, welcome to this very, very important segment, uh, the series where we talk about many important things uh, in our life and uh, the segments uh, br brought to you with the courtesy of Maurice Blackburn uh, Lawyers. And today there is a very important topic that we're going to be talking about. Uh, what do you need to know if you get injured at work? So it's a very, very important topic, as I, as I mentioned before. Uh, and today, we will be joined in the studio uh, with uh, Jillian Barrett. Jillian, welcome to the show. Thanks so much for having me. And it's wonderful to have your company here today. So Jillian is the, the principal lawyer and the Queensland Law Society Personal Injury Accredited Specialist. She is also Maurice Blanks, uh, Brown, Plains Regional Office uh, leader who also helps with the compensation claim and regularly visits the office. She has over a decade of experience exclusive in the area of compensation law. In this time, she has gained valuable experience in, on behalf of a wide range of people fighting uh, for their uh, fair on their behalf. She is a National Injury Insurance Scheme, which is NIIS expert, which was launched in Queensland in July 2016. She has got a lot of professional uh, memberships, Queensland Law Society member, Australian Lawyers Alliance member, Australian Lawyers for Human Rights member. So Gillian, that's quite a long title you have there. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, it is. <laughs> Okay, so uh, Gillian, getting on with this uh, topic, which is very, very important because many people might not know what, uh, or you know, what to do and uh, what the even rights are. You know, sometimes people might get injured and then just bear the pain and not do things. So, what legal rights do you have if you are injured at work? Sure. Uh, well, if you're a worker, then you're able to lodge a work cover claim. And to lodge a work cover claim, it's quite a simple process. Uh, you just need a workers' compensation medical certificate from your doctor, and you lodge that with the claim forms uh, to work cover Queensland. Most people in Queensland are covered by work cover themselves, but some employees who uh, work for really large employers might be covered by a self insurance but it's all still the same uh, rules and regulations that have to be complied with uh, for those self-insurers as well. And if you do get injured at work, you're able to go and see your own doctor, uh, you're able to get paid for time off work that you require and also paid for medical treatment that you require as well. And if your employer is at fault or negligent for your injuries in causing those, you can also sue for more or compensation uh, from your employer which is insured by work cover okay so uh, that is quite a, a nice uh, coverage there on all, all the things so you know when we look at this uh, coverage and if we look at all the benefits that you have mentioned who is covered and what benefits do they get all workers in Queensland are covered by workers' compensation. As I said, it's sometimes it's a self-insurer that covers a worker, but the majority of time it's uh, Work Cover Queensland themselves. So all workers have that insurance of policy uh, through their employer that their employer pays for, and they're covered if they're injured at work. And it doesn't matter if their employer um, is not at fault, uh, if it was just simply an accident or a lapse of consequences concentration and the person was injured, they're still able to lodge that workers' compensation claim. So they'll get wage payments if they're not able to work. Generally that's 85% of their normal weekly earnings for the first six months that, then, that they need workers' compensation. And then they're able to uh, have uh, treatment expenses paid for. Things like uh, a general practitioner, so the GP, the, t the attendance at the doctor, scans like x-rays, medication expenses, uh, physiotherapy, and even if they, they need surgery, then work cover can pay for that as well. Sometimes some people will need assistance around the home uh, and work cover will also uh, pay for that sometimes. 
And uh, as you have rightfully mentioned, that uh, you know, we cover does cover a lot of those things there. Now, people might not be aware. Uh, the, you know that it is wet cover, uh, so uh, you know every employer is required under Queensland law to pay for the wet cover based upon the number of people they have and the wages they pay. Uh, so, if someone is injured, how do they make a claim? It's a really simple process. As I said, most workers are covered by Work Cover Queensland, uh, but some are uh, covered by self insurance. Usually, uh, you can lodge a claim with Work Cover Queensland um, by phone, or you can do it online, or even in writing. Some doctors will actually provide a workers' compensation medical certificate and send that directly to Work Cover, and that will prompt Work Cover to start a claim for that person. There are some strict time limits though with bringing these sorts of claims and it's six months from the date that the person uh, was injured in which they have to lodge a claim. There are some min uh, some exceptions to that but it has to be quite specific circumstances. So if um, somebody has been injured at work and they've left it more than six months it's best to get legal advice. But try not to leave it too long because work cover won't pay back for the six months They'll only pay back for the last one month from the date that it was lodged if it's been more than uh, the, the one month since the date of the injury. So the, the, the timeline is very, very important that things are done timely. Uh, and that is, uh, the, you know, of course, always very advisable sooner than later. So if you can, uh, you, you, as you mentioned, rightfully mentioned there, Gillian, that, you know, people might have some recourses later on, but it, it requires a little bit more effort and uh, things to be done. Okay, uh, Gillian, right now, as we know, uh, you know, in today's day and age, we've got a lot of uh, students coming in here. There are migrant workers on all sorts of visas under which people are legally employed. So, you know, uh, do different types of visas affect the work cover. No, so provided the, the worker has a valid visa, then no, they're, they're still entitled to claim workers' compensation um, as per normal, uh, but it does have to be a valid visa. Uh, the, the, there are some dodgy employers out there that might try and say uh, that a person who is on a visa isn't entitled to workers' compensation or benefits um, for insurance if they're injured at work. That's not right, and if somebody's saying that, then get legal advice because it's not right and you do have rights. Okay, so that is a uh, uh, good uh, uh advice there that you know if your employer tells you not to lodge the claim that you know get legal advice uh, and okay in the circumstances that a claim might get rejected what recourse do people have and what should they do can uh, appeal the decision to reject the claim and uh, it's often uh, that there just needs to be a little bit more evidence or explanation of how the injury occurred or where it occurred or what the injury might be and those claims then do get accepted. So it's a, a simple process to do that. Strict time limits apply though. There's only three months from the date that a claim is rejected in which to lodge that review with the workers' compensation regulator. And again, get legal advice about that because that's something that a lawyer can help you with uh, or at least guide you in the right direction if you'd like to do it yourself. And once again, uh, that uh, uh, the time and of course getting everything in within the time is very, very, very important. So, and I know you've briefly touched on the time. So what are the time limits and how do they apply? Well, I mentioned the six-month time limit before to lodge the workers' compensation claim, but try not to leave it that long. Try and put it in sooner rather than later because memories fade, evidence might disappear, and it's best to get it lodged sooner rather than later so you can get payment for time off work that you might need or medical treatment uh, reimbursed as well. Uh, if a workers' compensation claim is rejected, then you have three months to appeal that uh, decision to the workers' compensation regulator. And if you wanted to pursue a common law damages claim, so that's a suing claim, if your employer is negligent or at fault, then you've only got three years to do that. So best to seek legal advice early. A lawyer can provide uh, some advice in relation to what your rights might be. Make sure that the insurers are 
are doing the right thing and make sure that uh, the employer isn't telling you something that um, isn't right. And that is uh, a good advice there as well. Um, sometimes, you know, employers might be saying all sorts of things there and not in uh, many times not knowing that you know they've got nothing to lose because uh, you know uh, they they are covered but even then sometimes they try and say now you mentioned few things there so you know uh, of course it is always a good thing to talk to your solicitor or lawyer uh, very early in this stage uh, but uh, you've also mentioned about common law so you know uh, could you please advise on you know when is the best time and briefly touch on the difference between the common law so there's two types of claims in uh, workers' compensation. The first is a statutory claim and that's no fault where you get paid for your time off work and medical treatment. The second type of claim is that common law damages claim and that's where you sue your employer if they're negligent or at fault uh, for your injuries. To do that you have to prove that they're at fault uh, but you claim, you're able to claim more compensation um, under that sort of claim and generally speaking it's for those future losses. So the effect of the injury on your working life and your pain and suffering that you go through and any future expenses that you might have. Because once that workers' compensation statutory claim stops for the payment of time off work and medical treatment, you won't be able to um, reopen that and try and get uh, further compensation if work covers uh, closed your claim. So it's important if you are going to have ongoing uh, issues, difficulties, uh, further treatment, uh, surgery that you might need or time off work uh, to investigate pursuing that common law damages claim and, and speaking to a lawyer about that. Uh, there was another part uh, to your question as well and, and what was that? Uh, one was on the timing and the other one was on the common law. Yeah, so, so in relation to the timing, uh, do try and get legal advice early. Uh, memories fade, witnesses disappear, evidence can go missing. Uh, so it's best to try and get that evidence early. Uh, photographs of how, for example, the machine was at the time that somebody was injured or uh, the co-worker's details um, who was working next to you at the time um, of the injury. So all of those sorts of things are important to, to get sooner rather than later and by speaking to a lawyer early we can gather that evidence and make sure it's all there all ready to be able to uh, pursue that claim successfully against the the employer as insured by work cover and that is a very very good advice there as well and we have always been saying that uh, in our time is of the essence please do it ASAP. Now, of course, we know that many times people, you know, don't seek advice. Maybe they are afraid of going to lawyers or solicitors. Uh, they often talk to their friends and someone says no. So, uh, you know, in doing that, what are the dangers of not getting advice and not getting good advice in a timely manner? There's so many. Um, so firstly, uh, your employer might tell you uh, not to lodge a work cover claim um, and then the time limit might actually pass for you to lodge a workers' compensation claim. Or your employer might uh, tell you only to see the company doctor and the company doctor uh, won't tell you that you need surgery and will make you go back to work even if you're just sitting there not really doing anything because they don't want to have to uh, pay for any time off work uh, but if you if you speak to a lawyer early they'll give you advice uh, to lodge a workers compensation claim uh, they'll also uh, give you advice in relation to uh, gathering together that evidence that uh, you need um, to for witnesses and uh, the the evidence uh, such as you know if the machine was broken and then it's been changed uh, if you delay too long in lodging a workers compensation compensation claim, you may not be fully reimbursed for uh, the expenses that you've incurred. So if you've paid for an MRI, that's a few hundred dollars and that, that's a very expensive uh, cost if you're not working. So we can make sure that uh, as lawyers uh, that uh, workers' compensation will reimburse you for that. Um, but get advice early because if 
you, you delay, you may not be able to um, get reimbursed for those sorts of things. And then with that three year time limit to pursue the common law damages claim, that can be disastrous. There's uh, some very limited exceptions to that three year time limit, uh, but it's best to get legal advice early because that can be a, a costly exercise having to go through court applications, a judge deciding whether you're able to extend that time limit of the three years. So it's best to get it in and get it uh, lodged early so that you don't have to go through that additional expense of going through court for that process. And once again, yeah, that is very, very important. Otherwise, uh, you know, people end up with such a long, prolonged uh, process uh, and getting that right advice in the uh, correct time, it's always very, very advisable. Now, of course, we know that, uh, you know, many people are afraid of coming out or going to solicit. So how can Maurice Blackburn help? Uh, well, you get some free initial advice. It won't cost you a, a cent to come and have a chat with us by phone or in person. And if we are able to uh, act on your behalf in that common law damages claim, we do it on a no win, no fee basis. So you don't have to pay anything up front. It's risk free for you because we won't charge you anything unless you win the case. It doesn't cost you anything to find out where you stand. So you should get advice. We've got uh, local offices all through throughout Queensland. We've got 13 offices in Queensland, so there would be uh, an office local to you so you can see a local lawyer. And thank you very much for that. So ladies and gentlemen, this has been a, a segment uh, talking about what you need to know when you are injured at work. And uh, Gillian, once again, thank you so much uh, for signing uh, or showing light on, on the topic. Uh, and of course, I know a lot of our viewers uh, might uh, benefit from watching this because uh, they might not be aware. Uh, we know this is one of the gray areas which is not uh, talked about much uh, because people uh, you know, are afraid uh, and uh, because they don't know. Mm. So once again, thank you very much. And, and so ladies and gentlemen, if you have any further uh, inquiries, you can call, contact uh, Gillian. Uh, and the office number is 3809-7400. And all the other contact details are up on the screen. So once again, Gillian, is there anything you'd like to say in conclusion? Oh, no, just thanks for having me. And I'm, I'm pleased to be able to um, educate your listeners today. We've also got a free call number, which is 1-800-810-812. For those people that might be outside of Brisbane. Once again, thank you so much. So once again, ladies and gentlemen, uh, that number is up there on the screen. And what you need to know when you are injured at work, this segment has been brought to you by Maurice Blackburn Lawyers. Thank you. Thank you. So ladies and gentlemen, there you are, the, uh, the monthly series from Maurice Blackburn Lawyers and uh, uh, next uh, in our the studios uh, for the next series, we'll be inviting Alison Barrett who would be discussing, uh, you know, there's uh, so much that happens on the roads or, or many different modes of uh, traveling. So, you know, if you get injured traveling, what are your rights? How are you covered? So it is very, very important. And the good point about there that uh, was made by Chilean was that uh, it's if you don't win, you don't pay. And there's no cost to get your initial consultation. So, you know, why won't you? So if you have any doubt, go talk to them. Find out uh, and find out what you're right. So ladies and gentlemen, that has been I the monthly segment with Maurice Blessman Lois and today we featured Gillian. Uh, in the next series we will have Alison Barrett who will be discussing the traveling related injuries. Until then, it's goodbye from us. <laughs>